We're in Malmo, Sweden. This is Victor. Hello. He's Swedish. And we're here for... My friend Pedro, Blood Bullets Bananas. How did the whole love affair with games begin? I guess, yeah, I was always playing games ever since I was maybe like three years old. One of the first PC games was Doom 2. And then uh, my parents' uh, only like restriction was just don't use a chainsaw. And really? Yeah, that's all good. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so you can kill everything, just yeah. don't use the chainsaw. They're the demons, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When did you get a first computer? We always had some sort of computer around. And I think around seven years old mm. is when I started like got introduced to a program called Click and Play, which is great. It's basically um, a game making kit where you don't have to program. What would you say was your first proper game? A game called uh, Cowboy. It's, I learned a lot just from that little project. I was I don't know, probably nine years old or something. Nine years old. Like but um, and it's funny, I even tried to um, distribute that game in the local game store we had in our town. Like I went down with uh, some diskettes and it's like, hey, really? could, could, do you want to sell this here? Little floppy disks yeah. with ha hand drawn labels. Uh, I think you just written cowboy on it. <laughs> really. How did that work? Uh, I don't think you didn't take it. You had a big year in 2006. I'm seeing a list of like five games here that you uh, yeah. cranked out. I think that's when I, yeah, just learned to actually make games in Flash. I managed to get a few sort of sponsorships, a few Flash websites online that pay you some cash to put their logo in when the game starts. But then I started to be able to make very small amounts of money, but I was like, ah, oh, okay, maybe I can make a living of this. What were big games for you when you were going through this richly productive teenage phase? So I guess I think it's probably a lot of Half-Life modifications. Okay. One that, you know, left an impression or a mod for Half-Life 1 that was called The Specialist. And it's basically sort of Matrix inspired, like, it was an online versus, but you could like slow down time and you jump off walls and, you know, two guns. Self-defense. Why? It's, uh, the world is a dangerous place. You don't need these in Malmo, though. Uh, you'd be surprised, actually. Really? Yeah. But it's when they do that thing where it... Oh, that's, that was it. That's... <laughs> there you go. Game developers that was, that was really, in the physical really bad. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> don't do that again. Um, so this, this feels like the action corner. Yeah. So this is Dead Toast Entertainment. This is business. This is business. This is where we get serious. Glory corner. Yeah. Wall of... Fame. All of almost fame. Yeah. So what were you doing that eventually led you to actually start working in games? Mm. How did that happen? Yeah, so one game that I got sort of fixated on was a game called Ragdoll Kung Fu, mm. uh, which was being developed by uh, mainly one guy called Mark Healy, uh, who went on to found Media Molecule later. So while I was sort of helping him beta test the game and I made some characters for the game and things like that, then uh, when they founded Media Molecule, I went over there for I think, a couple of weeks, uh, did some work experience, and then basically after that they uh, offered me a job. So you went straight from not working anywhere or doing anything yeah. to Media Molecule yeah. making but, games for Sony? Yeah, I joined Media Molecule just before Little Big Plans was announced, so sort of humble beginnings of you know, office above a bathroom store and then Little Big Plans was announced and then things took off. This Here's is uh, all media molecule things. Was it cool being so young and working on such an important game that everyone was going uh, crazy uh, about? It was yeah, I guess I guess so. Well this is nice though. This yeah. is like having gold discs. A way to begin on really a game cool. like that. <laughs> it's crazy. When my friend Pedro was born originally. It's, I think it's been a quite a long iterative process. Mm. Why did it first begin? So this before Media Molecule, again sort of in college or secondary school, it was sort of my final project. There was the Flash game of My Friend Pedro. So it was a school project? Yeah, kind of, yeah. The initial version of My Friend Pedro was called Blacklist. I started making the Flash game like way back then, I guess when I was around 19 or something. Then joined Media Molecule before finishing the game. Then I made a game called Nunchuck Charlie, a love story. After releasing that, I decided to finish up My Friend Pedro, basically. I just wanted to finish off that game very as quickly as possible, the Flash game, because it's just been in the back of my head for like years. So yeah, I needed a new name. I needed some sort of solution for tutorials. I wanted some sort of help where that could just appear and like give you the tutorials basically and you know crack some jokes or whatever so first I was drawing like a little gnome on a piece of paper and I thought oh maybe it's a gnome but then on the same paper I'd drawn a banana and I thought you know bananas are easier to animate so 
you know, why not? And then at the same time, my uh, girlfriend Ellie was just talking about, you know, her day. And then, like, at the moment, I was like, I just need a name for this game. And then uh, she was saying, oh, yeah, so my friend Pedro, he did this and that and that. And then I thought, like, wouldn't it be funny if you just called him my friend Pedro and, you know, Pedro is the banana. And I thought, yeah, I don't know, that'll do. <laughs> How would you describe my friend Pedro at its beating heart? First seed was the whole thing of puppeteering and like making the player feel like they're doing the cool thing yeah. uh, rather than playing a cool animation. Well, where did the idea of doing a ballet Ooh. of violence come from? It started with uh, the whole idea of like when you're in slow motion and you jump, you can do this sort of like uh, flip. Yeah. Um, and then it's sort of like if I change direction in the air, I can start rotating to the to another. So you can see that in the flash game, that was like that yeah. was like the hook of the, the whole thing. Right. Uh, but then, yeah, I need a dodge maneuver, and then I added the pirouette, basically, because then I thought once you rotate in this direction, you can combine that with rotating in the right. other direction, and then it sort of gives a cool feeling. When you built the levels, were you basically trying to create the ideal environment for the kind of gameplay that you were? Mm, yeah, totally. Yeah, a lot of times the process is, um, you know, think of a scenario, like, oh, wouldn't this be cool? Like a movement, maybe, or a combination of moves. So when did Dead Toast come into existence? When I started making all those Flash games, I felt like I needed some sort of brand to release the games under. This was a while ago. My English skills wasn't quite honed, and I think what I meant was like dead meat. You know the expression, oh, you're dead meat. Oh, like your toast. Yeah. So you, you mixed up I dead sort of meat mixed and toast. It up a bit, okay. I think. And then, uh, yeah, dead toast entertainment. Where are you taking us? Uh, I'm taking you to my favorite indie sweet shop. Indie sweet shops for yeah. indie game devs. <laughs> sweet and cool. Sweet and cool. All right. So, uh, yeah. Sweet and cool. This is Victor's favorite salt covered licorice <laughs> yeah. sweet. Absolutely, without question, my favourite Swedish sweet. <laughs> Plop. Plop! Found Pedro's candy love child. So this is the, the great tasting session. What do you recommend to start? What we got? You got... Oh, feed me. We're starting with this. A little bit of salt. A little bit of yeah, from, It's like, you know, accidental salt. Surprisingly yeah. delicious. Super salty coming in. I'm going to put the salty bit on my tongue as well. <laughs> is that the way you do it? Oh my god. <laughs> Did you do the entirety of My Friend Pedro on your own? Uh, everything apart from the music. Um, everything apart from the music? Yeah. How? Uh, well, it took four and a half years to do so. That, I mean, that's still... <laughs> working entirely on your own. You were graphics, yeah. sound design, yeah. animation, yeah. character design, yeah. story... Yeah. Um, Programming. Community management, yeah. asset production, company business, business company stuff. management. Paying tax takes a lot tax, of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, tax. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, multi-talented. Where did the music come from? There would be a bunch of musicians who uh, contacted me right. and just said, "Oh, can I make music for a game?" And I was like, "Oh, I mean, sure, sure. Make, Can't pay you, but yeah, it's like <laughs> sure. if if it ends up in the game, I'll definitely like pay. But you know, feel free to make tracks and send them my way." What is this place? This is, uh, I don't actually know what it's called, but it's a place you can get falafel, which is the thing you will eat if you're in Malmö. See, I did not know this. Apparently yeah. falafel is, is a big thing in Malmö. It's cheap and delicious, and that's how you make something popular. <laughs> how was your falafel, Victor? It was glorious. What's well, left? Just a little falafel butt. Falafel butt. <laughs> falafel butt. Who was it from Devolver who contacted uh, you? It was Nigel. Of course it was yeah, Nigel. Yeah, he okay. was, uh, yeah, it was great. He went, hey man, this shit is hot. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk. I think the first point of contact was just like a comment on the YouTube video. It was like, what? Like, <laughs> oh, from the Devolver account? Yeah, yeah. And, and you were then, like, ooh, hello. Yeah, I was like, oh, well. <laughs> Simon, Simon, our beloved camera person, uh, he, he, uh, he told me that he first saw my friend Pedro, he saw a GIF on 9gag. Right, yeah. But you put a GIF creator in the game as well. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. I love this idea of once once my friend Pedro is out in the world, suddenly the 
Twitter will be showered with all these amazing <laughs> gifs of ridiculous moves that people have pulled off. I think it's lovely. Yeah, not only me can spam the internet then, and everyone else can do it as well. Yeah, it's great. and then they can't blame you for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It ties into giving uh, motivation to do cooler things as well, because that's when the game shines. This place, Malmo, is just alive with game developers. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. One of the things that kept me going so all over this long is just the amazing game development community that's around here. And there's so many events that happen, like talks and just interesting things. They know the pain. It's like a support group, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Game Habitat Dev Hub. And to tell us more about it, this is Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Take us in. Tell us what's happening. Come in. So this place is so important. You named it twice. Yes, we did. Game it Habitat was... Dev Hub. Yes, exactly. So you, you know for sure where you are. Yeah. So Game Habitat is the organization that runs the space. And then Dev Hub is this building. So okay. it's one of the projects of Game Habitat, which is this co-working space for game developers okay. in Malmo. There is more to you two than you, Ellie, just running Victor's social club, isn't there? <laughs> isn't there? A little bit more. A little bit more yeah, than that. It's a, We're, uh, a lot more. Yeah, a so lot more. A lot more. Okay, so, so these two are together. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason that well, Pedro is, is called Pedro... Yeah. It's because I'm called Pedro. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah all right, good one, good one. So this is very festive Malmo. Yeah. That we've come to. It's a lively time of the year. And the festival is continuing with the annual rounders or Brennball tournament between the game developers in southern Sweden. So this is where game devs get competitive. This is this is the real action. And that is how you play Brennball. 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 I don't know. So when this game comes out, I mean, are you, are you ready to let go of Pedro? I think so. I don't know. It's weird. Once it's out there, then that's the game, right? Well, what happens when the internet starts shrieking for DLC? Oh, yeah. I think I need a little bit of holiday first. Hi. Hey. Is that a banana in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? That's a banana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>